Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello students, welcome back to the Pericyclic Reactions course. Okay, today we will try to understand the stereochemistry of the pericyclic reactions that is uh, electrocyclic reactions. Okay, so before starting to that topic, so let us try to quickly recollect what we have discussed in the previous class. In the previous class, we made a successful attempt to understand what are the pericyclic reactions, which kind of molecules are able to show these pericyclic reactions and briefly about their stereochemistry as well. Okay. Electrocyclic reactions are the type of pericyclic reactions which can be seen in the case of acyclic conjugated systems. Acyclic conjugated systems. And one more thing we need to know is the conjugation must be continuous. Okay. So, next one is electrocyclic reactions are unimolecular reactions. That means a single molecule will give you the product, involve in the reaction and thereby give you the product based on the reaction conditions. Okay. So, electrocyclic reactions will be seen as discussed in the case of acyclic conjugated systems. One requirement is there in such case of molecules. So, the termini uh, which are going to be, you know, forming a new sigma bond should be close to each other. That means, whenever there is a uh, system, unsaturated system, conjugated system, the terminal carbon atoms of that particular unsaturated system should be close to each other. So, for this also, we have seen an example in the last class. So, butadiene exists in two forms. One is S cis form, where the termini are close to each other and S trans form, where the terminal carbon atoms are far away from each other. Okay. So, S cis form can readily undergo the electrocyclic reactions, whereas S trans form finds bit difficulty. Okay. So, but uh, it is uh, not like, you know, S trans form can never undergo electrocyclic reactions. Of course, it can do the electrocyclic reactions provided we facilitate uh, the carbon-carbon bond rotations. If we facilitate the carbon-carbon bond rotations, then S trans form will uh, convert into the S cis form. Thereafter, allows it to participate in the electrocyclic reactions. In the previous class, we also made an attempt to understand how a pi bond which is already there in the molecule is transforming into a sigma bond. Okay. So, at the expense of one pi bond in the molecule, a new sigma bond is generated at the end of the reaction. How it should happen? Means, so the terminal carbon atoms which are connected to the next neighboring carbon atom should undergo bond rotation by 90 degrees. Okay. So, a 90 degrees of rotation at the CC bond at the termini will only allow the pi bond to transform into the sigma bond. Right. So, both these uh, rotations, both the rotations at the either end of uh, the molecule is necessary for such kind of formation of a sigma bond. Okay. So, these rotations are two types. These rotations are two types. One is same side rotations. That means, either end of the termini, we are rotating it in the same side. That is either clockwise or in the anti-clockwise. We call it as con mode of rotation or con rotatory process. And if one termini is rotated to the clock, uh, clockwise direction and the other is rotated to the anti-clockwise direction, we call it as disrotatory process or dis mode of rotation. So, when we try to recollect where the electrocyclic reactions are categorized into two types, one is the forward reaction from the acyclic molecule to the ring formation, ring molecule, right. So, that is called as uh, electrocyclic ring closing reaction. Whereas, if a cyclic molecule is transforming back into an open chain molecule, we call it as electrocyclic ring opening reaction, okay. And at the same time, based on the number of pi electrons involved in the particular electrocyclic reaction. So, the electrocyclic reactions are also categorized as two types. One is 4n electron system, pi electron systems and 4n plus 2 pi electron systems. So, this is the 
best example for uh, categorizing or understanding the two categories of electrocyclic reactions. The first one is 4n pi electron system and the second one is 4n plus 2 pi electron system. So coming back to the stereochemistry, uh, what we have briefly discussed in the previous class. So these electrocyclic reactions until unless they show any substituent at the terminal carbon atoms, you need not to worry about the stereochemistry, right. So, if they are having the substituents at the terminal carbon atoms, then during the conversion of the pi molecular orbital by rotating linearly rotating uh, for a linear conjugation that is end on end overlapping to form a sigma bond. So, the groups attached at the terminal carbon atom will also try to rotate, will also try to rotate by 90 degrees. So, the rotation if you are following con rotation, con mode of rotation or dis mode of rotation will give you a different orientation of the groups attached at the terminal carbon atom. So, after the rotation that means after the end of the reaction formation of the cyclic molecule, if you observe the position of the groups attached. So, we can try to identify the stereochemistry changes, right. So, that will uh, now make an attempt to understand it properly with the help of this molecular model. So, for example, so if you see this, so this is a butadiene molecule, this is a butadiene molecule, right. So these terminal carbon atoms are now involved in the formation of a sigma bond. So this is C1, C2, C3 and C4, 4 carbon atoms are there in this butadiene and this C1 carbon atom is now breaking a pi bond between C1 and C2 and C4 carbon atom is simultaneously breaking the pi bond which is existing between C3 and C4 and now they are involved in the formation of a new sigma bond between C1 and C4, right. So, you what it needs means this pi orbital has to rotate by 90 degrees like this. See, I have rotated it by clockwise direction 90 degrees. So, to form a sigma bond, we need the same wave function of the orbitals, pi orbitals to involve in the end on end overlapping, which gives you an additive overlapping and thereby a bonding molecular bond, right. So, if the wave functions are different with the approaching uh, molecular orbitals, so then it gives you an anti-bonding molecular orbital, right, which is not possible for the bond formation. So now to form the bond, what I am doing here is I am rotating it anti-clockwise. Here I have rotated it clockwise and this terminal carbon atom, it is rotated anti-clockwise by 90 degrees, by 90 degrees. Now you can see the same wave function at the terminal carbon atoms approaching each other to form a sigma end on end overlapping thereby a sigma bond, right. So, this is happening. So, in due course of this process, if you have clearly observed before rotation, the groups which are hydrogens, let us assume these white uh, uh, color balls are hydrogens, they are in the plane, they are in the same plane because all these four carbon atoms are sp2 hybridized, right. So, when I start transforming this by rotating at 90 degrees, what is happening? So, these groups which are in the plane now came above and below the plane of this carbon, right. So, one, one of the hydrogen came above and one of the hydrogen came below. So, the same is the case with this terminal carbon atom also. So, one hydrogen has come up and other hydrogen has come down, right. So, now it will involve in the formation of the sigma bond. So, as all the hydrogens are same, there is no point of discussing stereochemistry about this molecule. But if one of the hydrogens is at either carbon atom, each carbon atom, terminal carbon atom is replaced by a different group or a different atom, what happens? See now. So now this is the case, right? Let us assume this case before bond rotations, yeah, yeah. So now if you see, I am performing the 
con rotations here okay so con rotation means both carbon atoms at the termini should be rotated either in the same clockwise direction or in the anti clockwise direction so now i am making it to rotate in clockwise direction by 90 degrees right so before that what i understand is this group which is orange in color is pointing towards my right hand side right so this is pointing towards my right hand side and at the same time this group is also pointing towards my right side only right so when i attempt a con rotation that means clockwise rotation here and also clockwise rotation here of course the wave functions are matching with each other therefore there will be a fruitful uh, uh, overlapping and gives you a sigma bond right so in due course what happened to these groups which are previously on the same side that is right to my side right so they came on the top right they also are on the same side so this is what we have discussed in the previous class right we have made a small uh, table kind of thing also same side groups if present on the terminal carbon atoms if groups are present towards the same side on con rotation you will get always the groups on the same side in the product as well right so try to understand it clearly if the reactant molecule which is an open chain acyclic molecule a conjugated unsaturated system the same groups these two are same type of groups right if they are present in the same side that means both are in the right side only looking lights right side only right if they are present in the same side on con rotation that means same direction of rotations you will get in the product also the groups lying in the same side next example if the groups are in the same side but if i do this mode of rotation what is this mode of rotation this mode means one carbon atom is being rotated in the clockwise the other carbon atom is being rotated in the anti clockwise direction or vice versa right the reverse of this also is possible so one carbon atom in the anti clockwise direction and the other end in the clockwise direction is also this mode of rotation right so the first carbon atom i am making it undergo a clockwise rotation by 90 degrees and the second one which was also showing the group the same group on the same side i am making it to undergo rotation by anti clockwise direction i rotated it in this direction please observe carefully right so what happened to the groups forget about the bonding uh, thing now so just look at the groups what happened to the groups now so one group has come up and one group has come down right so a trans kind of relationship is now established after the formation of a sigma bond a trans relationship is established even though the groups are on the same side as we have performed the this mode of rotation that means opposite uh, rotation at the carbon atoms terminal carbon atoms it has resulted in the formation of a trans relationship between these two groups now let us see if the groups are opposite to each other right so one group is looking towards my right side and the other group is looking towards my left side right so this is another uh, uh, criteria so now obviously to form a sigma bond i need to rotate it right so how should i rotate it let's try the con mode of rotation first con mode means what so clockwise rotations or anti clockwise rotations performing at the terminal carbon atoms right so let us rotate it by clockwise direction so the group has come up and then let us rotate it in the clockwise direction this has come down see if the groups are facing opposite to each other right so if they are opposite to each other and if you perform the con mode of rotation the same oppositeness will be retained right previously before reaction they are opposite to each other and after reaction also they are opposite to each other one is lying uh, coming up and one is coming down right so what we can preliminarily understand here means con rotations will retain the orientation of the groups right so if they are uh, say uh, oriented same side 
in the product also same side you will see if they are oriented opposite side the product also after con rotation they will be seen in the opposite sides right so this gives you a trans relationship yeah come back again so now again the groups are opposite to each other one is towards left and one is towards the right side of me right so if i perform the disc mode of rotations what is disc mode of rotation yeah correct so disc mode of rotation means opposite uh, rotations at the terminal carbon atoms so i am rotating the first carbon atom clockwise right and rotating the fourth carbon atom anti clockwise direction so what has happened here the groups are now seen on the same side of the molecule so a cis relationship is now seen here cis mode of relationship is seen here so that means what we can preliminarily understand from this means if groups are same side on performing the dis rotations you will get an opposite orientation in the product if groups are opposite side on performing the dis mode of rotations that means opposite rotations so you will be always seeing the product with the groups lying on the same side right so this is what we try to understand once again i'll write it on the board so that you can remember it again so same side groups on con mode of rotation what happens in the product also you will see them as cis related or same side only same side groups on this mode of rotations what happens you will get the trans relationship between the groups in the product or you can also say like they are seen opposite to each other right one above and one below the plane right opposite side of groups in the reactant molecule if tend to perform con rotations you will get trans relationship between the groups in the product that means they will be seen opposite side only opposite side groups on this mode of rotation this mode we will get cis orientation in the product that means same side they will be seen in the product right so till now so there will be no confusion am i correct right so electrocyclic reactions are mainly seen in the case of acyclic unsaturated conjugated systems where uh, they are treated as unimolecular reactions a single molecule will undergo the uh, cyclic reorganization of electrons to give you the cyclic product so in the transition state depending upon the number of electrons involved you categorize the electrocyclic reactions into 4n electron systems or 4n plus 2 pi electron system right we have seen the example for 4n electron system the basic example is uh, butadiene cis butadiene and then uh, hexatriene as well for the 4n plus 2 pi electron system right so and then we tried to attempt uh, 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 to understand the stereochemistry involved if the groups on the terminal carbon atom are different with different modes of rotation con mode and dis mode get deep into the understanding of stereochemistry so in the beginning of this pericyclic reactions we have discussed that to ex explain the pericyclic reactions how it is happening there are three theories perturbational molecular orbital theory aromatic uh, transition state theory and then frontier molecular orbital approach is there frontier molecular orbital approach is also named as homolumo approach right because entirely the molecule reaction can be explained based on the homo molecular orbital and 
in some other cases, not uh, in the case of electrocyclic reactions and in some other cases with the help of a lumo molecular orbital as well, right. So, we need to now go back, try to understand the frontier molecular orbital approach which is the easiest way to understand the pericyclic reactions, right. And then understand the homo molecular orbitals of each electron system that is 4n electron systems and 6 4n plus 2 pi electron systems. So, to understand the frontier molecular orbital theory approach, so we have started from the molecular orbital theory LCAO linear combination of atomic orbitals. So, the linear combination of atomic orbitals are giving you the molecular orbital. The number of atomic orbitals combining to form the molecular orbitals, you, you see the same number of molecular orbitals, right. So, combination of atomic orbitals is in two different ways. One is end to end uh, combination which will give you always a sigma bond and then sidewise overlapping which will give you a pi bond. When the combining atomic orbitals or the molecular orbitals are combining with each other or overlapping with each other with the same wave functions, it will give you the allowed uh, molecular orbital, right, uh, which is for bonding, bonding molecular orbital. And if the wave functions are like different, so one positive wave function and one negative wave function is uh, trying to combine with each other, then it will give you a, a, a subtractive overlapping or, uh, and results in the formation of an antibonding molecular orbital, which is not able to form a bond, right. Now, so, based upon as we are always dealing with the unsaturated systems, we will be considering the pi molecular orbitals only because the pi molecular orbitals are only involved in the electro cyclic electro uh, reorganization of the electrons and then converting one of the pi bond into a sigma bond, right. So, that is why in uh, constructing those uh, pi molecular orbitals also, we have seen how many sp2 carbon atoms are there in that molecule, right. So, if it is an unsaturated system, definitely one pi bond is there. That means the hybridization of carbon is sp2. How many pi electrons are there? That many number of sp2 carbon atoms will be there. So, for uh, ethene molecule, you can see two numbers of sp2 carbon atoms and one pi bond and 2 pi electrons. How many pi electrons are there? 2 pi electrons are there. For this, what you will get means only 2 molecular orbitals because 2 sp2 carbon atoms are involved. So, 2 molecular orbitals you will get psi 1 and psi 2. How many electrons are there pi electrons? 2 electrons are there. Whether it is an atomic orbital or a molecular orbital. So, the maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated in this orbital is only 2, right. So, therefore, the electrons when try to fill up here, you will get psi 2, psi 1, 2 electrons and psi 2 with 0 electrons. Psi 2 has no electrons, okay. Now, if it is butadiene, so, 4 number of sp2 carbon atoms, right, and 2 pi bonds and 4 pi electrons. What happens to this configuration means psi1 will have 2 electrons and psi2 will have 2 electrons, psi3 will have 0 and psi4 will have 0 electrons. So, if it is hexatriene and 6 carbon atoms are there, 6 sp2 carbons are there, right, and 3 pi bonds are there, and 6 pi electrons are there. So, what happens to the configuration? Psi1 will take 2 electrons, psi2, 2, 2 electrons, psi3, 2 electrons, psi4, 0, psi5, 0 and psi6, 0. So, 6 molecular, pi molecular orbitals are there and the configuration, so that is uh, filling up of electrons is this way. 
So, why we are doing this means as the frontier molecular orbital theory is also called as homo lumo theory, we have to identify in order to understand the reaction, we have to identify the homo molecular orbital in the case of electrocyclic reactions and homo molecular orbital and also lumo molecular orbital in the case of cycloadditions and other react other pericyclic reactions right as electrocyclic reactions are unimolecular you need not to worry about the lumo molecular orbital because the homo will define the reaction homo molecular orbital will define the reaction so what is homo molecular orbital and what is lumo molecular orbital right so homo molecular orbital means ho mo lumo molecular orbital means lu mo so high energetic occupied molecular orbital right what is homo high energetic h means high energetic occupied molecular orbital or simply we call it as highest occupied molecular orbital highest occupied molecular orbital lumo means low energy unoccupied molecular orbital. So, low energy unoccupied molecular orbital or lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, right, homo and lumo. So, this is the difference. What we got the information from this means we have to see now, we have to see now, right. So, let us take an example of butadiene, right. So, how many pi molecular orbitals are there? Psi 1, psi 2, psi 3 and psi 4, 4 molecular orbitals are there. How many electrons are, uh, you know, filled in the psi 1 molecular orbital? 2. So, this is the psi 1 molecular orbital with 2 electrons. And how many electrons are filled in the psi 2 molecular orbital? Again, 2. Any molecular orbital can take only 2 electrons, right. So, psi 3, no electrons and psi 4, no electrons, right. So, we have also discussed during this uh, molecular orbital theory discussion that as the number increases, the energy of that particular molecular orbital also increases. So, the energy is in this way, energy, right. So, psi 1 is the lowest energetic molecular orbital and it is a filled molecular orbital followed by psi 2, psi 3 and psi 4. So, psi 4 is the high energetic molecular orbital, but it is unoccupied molecular orbital. No electrons are there in this molecular orbital. So, what is HOMO now? So, what HOMO is defining? It is a high energetic molecular orbital which is occupied, which is occupied with electrons, right. So, among this uh, occupied molecular orbitals, what are the occupied molecular orbitals? Psi 1 and psi 2. Among these occupied molecular orbitals which is having more energy, yes correct psi 2. So, psi 2 is having more energy and at the same time it is an occupied molecular orbital, right. So, therefore, it becomes the homo, it becomes the homo. Among these two unoccupied molecular orbitals which are empty, which one is having lowest energy? Psi 3. So, this becomes the lumo molecular orbital. This becomes the lumo molecular orbital. So, now you understand, right? So, among the occupied molecular orbitals, the one with highest energy is homo, that is psi 2 in the case of butadiene. And then among the unoccupied molecular orbitals, the one with lowest energy is lumo the one with lowest energy is lumo. So, always the electronic uh, uh, no, exchange happens between homo to lumo and vice versa. Two more conditions which we need to give some importance of course, right. So, that is whether the reaction is being carried out in the thermal condition or you are irradiating the molecule with photochemical energy to perform the reaction. That means, the electrocyclic reactions or all the pericyclic reactions can happen in two different conditions. One is either in the thermal condition 
or in the photochemical condition, right. So, what is the difference between this thermal condition and photochemical condition if we attempt to understand it? So, thermal reactions happen by giving heat to the molecules, right. If you have a reaction, you just heat it. So, then based upon the heat energy you are giving, so the molecules will collide with each other and then result in the fruitful collisions. So, the fruitful collisions will result in the formation of the products. So, that is a thermal reaction. Photochemical reaction means you take the reaction mixture and then irradiate with light of particular wavelength. So, that means you are just giving some light energy in the form of photons, the molecules will take the energy and perform the reaction. So, that is a photochemical reaction and this is a thermal reaction. And one more important thing which differentiates the thermal reaction and the photochemical reaction is the state of energy. All the thermal reactions will happen in the ground state. All the photochemical reactions will happen in the excited states. So, if you are performing the reaction, electrocyclic reaction under thermal condition, there is a HOMO which is a well established one that is highly occupied molecular orbital under ground states. You have to select the HOMO in ground state for a thermal reaction. Whereas in the case of photochemical condition, because you are irradiating the molecule or the particular bond with a, a specific wavelength of light, what happens? The electron absorbs the energy, photon energy and then it goes to the excited level, it goes to the next higher level. So, HOMO will change in the case of photochemical reactions, HOMO will change in the case of photochemical reactions. So, HOMO will not be same as in the case of thermal reaction and also in the case of photochemical reaction, they are different. If HOMO molecular orbital which is more important to understand uh, the electrocyclic reactions in the name of frontier molecular orbital approach, the HOMO molecular orbital plays a crucial role. So, first thing is we need to identify the perfect HOMO molecular orbital in the given experimental condition. So, for ethene molecule you have two molecular orbitals psi 1 with two electrons and psi 2 with zero electrons. So, under ground state conditions that is thermal conditions right. So, this is the HOMO and this is the LUMO where this is under thermal conditions. If you go to photochemical condition, what is happening? So, you are irradiating this with light and then it is going to the excited state, it is going to the excited state. What happens here? You will have the two molecular orbitals psi 1 and psi 2. But what happened to the electronic arrangement? One electron is in the ground state and the other electron has moved to the excited state, right. So, now among these two molecular orbitals, both are occupied only, right. So, both are occupied and whichever is having more energy when both are occupied is treated as homo molecular orbital, is treated as homo molecular orbital. So, therefore, this becomes the new homo in the case of photochemical conditions, okay. For butadiene, CH2 double bond, so for butadiene, there are four such molecular orbitals, psi 1, psi 2, psi 3 and psi 4. So, what is the electronic configuration here? Psi 1 can take 2 electrons, psi 2 will take 2 electrons and psi 3, psi 4 are without electrons. So, in the ground state, the electrons are filled like this. So, now which one is the HOMO here? HOMO means among the filled occupied molecular orbitals, 
whatever is having highest energy is treated as homo, right. So, therefore, this becomes the homo and this becomes the lumo. Among the unoccupied molecular orbitals, psi 3 is one which is having low energy, where it is under thermal conditions. If you go to photochemical conditions, what is happening here? You have these four molecular orbitals, psi 1, psi 2, psi 3 and psi 4. If you irradiate this one with a, a specific uh, light wavelength, so what is happening? So, one of these is going to the excited state, right. So, then the electronic configuration will become like this, psi 1 will have two electrons still and psi 2 will have one electron and psi 3 will also get one electron, right, psi 4 is not having any electrons. So, among the occupied orbitals, what are the occupied orbitals here, psi 1 is occupied, psi 2 is occupied and psi 3 is occupied. Among the occupied orbital, which one is having more energy now? psi 3 is having more energy, very good. So, homo is psi 3 and lumo is psi 4. So, what we are trying to conclude from this understanding means in electrocyclic reactions, you need to consider only homo molecular orbitals, okay. So, homo molecular orbitals are changing with respect to the reaction conditions. Under thermal condition, a different molecular orbital is acting as a homo and under photochemical conditions, the same molecule is showing a different molecular orbital as the homo, right. So, under thermal conditions, psi 1 is the homo here, whereas psi 2 is homo under photochemical conditions, if you see, right. For butadiene also, under thermal conditions, psi 2 is the homo under photochemical conditions, psi 3 is the homo. So, therefore, the reaction happens according to the psi 2 molecular orbital under thermal conditions in the case of butadiene. The reaction happens with respect to the psi 3 molecular orbital in the case of uh, uh, in under photochemical conditions in the case of butadiene, right. So, we already have constructed the molecular orbitals, pi molecular orbitals and you well know about it. So, the advantage in the photo uh, uh, FMO approach, frontier molecular orbital approach is you need to consider only the terminal lobes, terminal lobes on the terminal carbon atom, right. So, just do it. And one more thing, if I remember correctly, I have given you a hint like if the molecular orbital is odd number, molecular orbital is odd number the terminal carbon atoms will have the lobes with the same wave function on the same side. If the molecular orbital is even number, if the molecular orbital is even number, the terminal lobes, the carbon atoms at the termini will have the lobes with opposite orientation, okay. So, let us see this here. See this psi 1 molecular orbital of this butadiene. So, this is the psi 1 molecular orbital, right. So, all the wave functions are same and I also told you, right, right. So, psi 1 molecular orbital will have mirror plane of symmetry, mirror plane of symmetry, right. If you cut this molecule into half, that means if I cover this half, you are always capable of imagining what is the other half. That means if you put a mirror here, you can get the other half also this is having sigma plane of symmetry, right. So, psi 1 molecular orbital is having sigma plane of symmetry and psi 2 molecular orbital will be having C2 axis of symmetry that we will see. Now. If you see here, all the wave functions on all the lobes is same, on the top it is same and on the bottom it is same, right. So, this is not the homo. What is homo here? psi 2 molecular orbital. So, what happens to the psi 2 molecular orbital? What happens? So, the wave functions are different. So, this is the psi 2 molecular orbital of butadiene. 
what you can see here the terminal lobes are different okay so different so it is having c2 axis of symmetry but not the mirror plane of symmetry if i cover this you cannot imagine the other half if you see here it is the negative wave function for our convenience to understanding and this is the positive wave function so it is not the same wave function on the terminal lobes right so you will definitely cannot uh, see the sigma plane of symmetry here what we can see here is the c2 axis of symmetry right so rotate it by 180 degrees rotate it by 180 degrees so i am turning it by 180 degrees what happened previously here a negative wave function was there it is there and previously here a positive wave function lobe is there it is there right so you are getting identical identical on rotation by 180 degrees therefore it is having c2 axis of symmetry it is having c2 axis of symmetry right so what we are trying to understand here means Hmm. So, when it is big psi 1 molecular orbital, the orientation is different. When it is psi 2 molecular orbital, the orientation is different. If it is going to become psi 3 molecular orbital, which is homo, again the orientation becomes different. So, the reaction or the stereochemistry changes, the stereochemistry changes depending upon the thermal condition or the photochemical condition. Now, you, I hope you got the clarity, right? the stereochemistry of these electrocyclic reactions largely depends upon the reaction condition as well. So, if it is thermal condition, it gives you a different stereoisomer. If it is a photochemical condition, it gives you a different stereoisomer, though you are performing the same kind of same mode of rotations. Though you are performing the con rotations, you will get a different isomer under photochemical condition and thermal condition. Though you are performing this mode of rotations, you will get a different type of isomer under thermal conditions and photochemical conditions. So, this is what I am trying to uh, put you in your mind. So, now take the uh, butadiene molecule as an example and see in thermal condition also in the photochemical condition which one is allowed and which one is forbidden, right. So, first of all, let us see under thermal conditions. What is the electronic configuration here? Psi 1 to psi 2 to psi 3 0 and psi 4 0. So, first thing is we need to identify the homo molecular orbital. So, which one is homo molecular orbital? Psi 1 or psi 2? Correct. Psi 2 is the homo molecular orbital here, right. So, if it is psi 2, how the molecular orbital will look like? So, this is the psi 2 molecular orbital and what happens to the lobes here? So, this is the psi 2 molecular orbital which is a homo molecular orbital under thermal conditions, okay. So, now I will try to perform con rotations as well as dis rotations here. So, con mode of rotation and dis mode of rotation to just see whether the reaction is going forward or not, right. So, con rotation means what? Rotate both the terminal carbon atoms in the same direction, right. So, I am rotating this carbon atom in the clockwise direction and this carbon atom also in the clockwise direction. So, both are in the clockwise direction, so con rotation. So, what is happening here means, so this if we take it as negative wave function and this as positive 
plus plus minus minus. What is happening here? So, on rotating this by 90 degrees, how much degrees we have to rotate? 90 degrees. On rotating it by 90 degrees, this minus wave function is coming here and on rotating this by 90 degrees and this minus wave function is coming here. So, therefore, it is a bonding mode of interaction. It is a bonding mode of interaction. So, So, this is a bonding interaction. So, if I rotate this by this mode, that means one is clockwise rotation and the other is anti clockwise rotation. So, this is this mode. So, what is happening here? So, let us uh, concentrate on the terminal carbon atoms only, right. So, if I am rotating this by anti clockwise direction, this positive wave function is coming over here and on rotating this by clockwise direction, so this negative wave function is coming over here, right. So, you can clearly understand with the different colors. See now. So, the two wave functions are not same. So, therefore, additive overlapping is not possible here. Therefore, the resultant is anti bonding. So, this orientation, this orientation under thermal conditions, con orientation is giving you the bonding and it is allowed. So, this, this mode of rotations on uh, under thermal conditions for uh, butadiene is giving you anti bonding and this is forbidden. So, this is the case under thermal conditions. Let us see under photochemical conditions also. So, under photochemical conditions, so that is first excited state F E S means first excited state, right. So, what is the electronic configuration? Psi 1 is having 2 electrons, psi 2 will have 1 electron and psi 3 will also have 1 electron because this is the first excited state, an electron from psi 2 has moved to the psi 3. So, which one is homo now? So, psi 3 is the homo now. So, for butadiene, how the psi 3 molecular orbital will be seen? So, psi 3 is an odd molecular orbital, odd number molecular orbital. So, same wave functions on the same side and two nodes you have to project. Right. So, let us take this blue one as positive wave function plus 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 and this as minus. Right. So, how many nodes should be there for psi 3 molecular orbital? Two nodes. Where are they? So, one node is between this, right, C1 and C2, and the other node is in between this, C3 and C4. Right. Two nodes are seen here. So, try to do the con mode of rotation and this mode of rotation and give your observation, which one is allowed, which one is forbidden. So, on con mode of rotation means same side rotation, what is happening? So, rotate it by clockwise here and also clockwise here. 
So, on clockwise rotation what is happening? The positive wave function is coming here and the negative wave function is coming here, right. So, is it bonding or anti-bonding? Very good, anti-bonding. So, negative wave function for this C4 is coming here. and then it is coming here, right, so minus plus. So, this gives you anti-bonding interaction and therefore, this is forbidden. Whereas, on this mode of rotation, so what we are doing here, one clockwise and the other anti-clockwise. If I rotate this clockwise, the positive wave function is coming here and then if I rotate this anti-clockwise, again the positive wave function is coming over here. So, it gives you the bonding interaction. plus, plus, minus, minus. So, this gives bonding interaction and therefore, this is allowed, and therefore, this is allowed, right. So, this is about the stereochemistry and uh, FMO approach for the electrocyclic reactions. Where we will derive after understanding this means, Woodward Hoffman rules, we will derive to the Woodward Hoffman rules. So, they have tabulated. So, on which mode of rotation under thermal conditions it is allowed, on which mode of rotations under thermal conditions it is forbidden for both 4 n uh, electron systems and also 4 n plus 2 pi electron systems. On which mode of rotation this mode uh, is allowed in the photochemical condition and this mode is forbidden in the photochemical condition is also given. I will show you the table that is Woodward Hoffman rules for the electrocyclic reactions. Woodward Hoffman rules for electrocyclic reactions, okay. So, first consider the system that is number of electrons involved. So, it may be 4 n electron system or it may be 4 n plus 2 electron system, pi electron system, right. And mode of reaction, that is con rotation or dis rotation. And then allowedness of reaction, under thermal condition and also photochemical condition. So, thermal condition and photochemical condition. So, 4 n electron system that is butadiene on con mode of rotation under thermal condition it is allowed and under photochemical condition as we are taking psi 3 it is forbidden, this mode of rotation, 4 n system under this mode of reaction. So, thermal condition it is forbidden and in the photochemical condition it is allowed. So, for 4 n plus 2 system 
con mode of rotation under thermal condition it is opposite to the foreign system. So, it is forbidden whereas, for photochemical it is allowed. So, the disc mode is allowed and here it is forbidden. So, this Woodward Hoffman rules for electrocyclic reactions will give us the complete picture of whatever so far we have discussed, right. So, con rotations under thermal condition for 4 n system it is allowed. So, dis rotations for 4 n plus 2 pi system under thermal condition is allowed, ok. See for thermal condition and photochemical condition you just see where all it is allowed. So, this gives us the complete picture of the electrocyclic uh, reactions, right. So, in the next class we will see uh, solving the number of examples for electrocyclic reactions, ok. So, hope you have understood, thank you.